Hey guys, we had a great live stream when news dropped yesterday about the series formerly known as Lord of the Rings on Prime. So if you haven't already, you can check that out for some fun initial reactions and discussions from the chat. But today I thought it would be good not only to organize some of the highlights from that stream, but also some follow-up thoughts and observations I've had since then. First off is obviously the big news. The title of the show is The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Now personally, I really like this title. It's not too focused on a single character or realm, like if it were named The Rise of Sauron or The Fall of Numenor. The Lord of the Rings obviously has fantastic name recognition, and the Rings of Power factor heavily in the Second Age. And their creation is kind of the event that starts all of the conflict that comes during this time. As for the teaser itself, it features molten metal being poured into wooden molds creating the name of the show. This evokes the feeling of a forge, which is incredibly appropriate given the forging of the rings is not only Sauron's greatest deception, but the beginning of all the conflict and devastation that takes place in the Second Age. And in case you were wondering, Nature of Middle-Earth editor Carl Hostetter shared via Tolkien Guide that the script we see on the side of the O reads Min Ani Duar, which translates to one for the dark, despicable one. Likely a portion of the translation for one for the dark lord on his dark throne. And despite many initially thinking this was CG, we've since learned from IGN's behind the scenes feature and the one ring.net that this was all filmed with practical effects from the wood to the metal to the water. Speaking of the water, one of my favorite moments from the reveal is the timing of the narration during this part. Assumed by many, and later confirmed by one of the show's writers on Twitter, the narrator is Morphid Clark's Galadriel, who is reading the Ringverse poem. After she reaches the line regarding the nine for mortal men doomed to die, the scene is drowned in water. This is a really clever detail foreshadowing the fall of Numenor, the great realm of men in the Second Age. I not only love this imagery and this reference, but also the choice of Galadriel to narrate this teaser. It kind of calls back to Kate Blanchett's excellent narration of the Lord of the Rings prologue, utilizing an immortal and important character to both time periods. In one of the biggest bits of news that I was surprised really seemed to fly under the radar, it appears we also found out the rating of the series. As our friend the Tolkien professor pointed out on Twitter, the Prime Video page for The Rings of Power here in the US has the show listed as TV-14. For all who feared the show would become a copy of Game of Thrones in terms of adult content, this should come as some very welcome news. Finally, we also got a press release with a statement from showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. This is a title we imagine could live on the spine of a book next to J.R.R. Tolkien's other classics. The Rings of Power unites all the major stories of Middle-earth's Second Age. The forging of the rings, the rise of the Dark Lord Sauron, the epic tale of Numenor, and the last alliance of elves and men. Until now, audiences have only seen on screen the story of the One Ring. But before there was one, there were many, and we're excited to share the epic story of them all. This confirms what many of us have speculated for some time. We'll see Celebrimbor and his elven smiths forging rings of power. We'll see Sauron become the incredibly powerful force that would wreak havoc on the free peoples of the Second Age. We'll see the fall of Numenor, the great island nation of men that would include characters like Elendil and Isildur, ancestors of Aragorn. We'll see not only the One Ring and the Three Rings of the Elves, but also the seven for the dwarves, and the nine that would give us the Nazgul. And of course, they even name drop the last alliance of elves and men, the climactic battle of the Second Age that we first saw in the prologue of Peter Jackson's Fellowship of the Ring, and what very well could be what this entire series builds toward over its rumored five seasons. So this is kind of crazy, but just as I was about to originally release this video, Amazon confirmed on social media that the music we hear in this is indeed Oscar-winning composer Howard Shore. 
Now, it's been rumored for a little while that he and Bear McCreary were working on this series together, but this is our first official confirmation that the incredible composer from The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit trilogies has indeed returned to Middle-earth. All told, it was an exciting day for Tolkien fans eager to see and hear more about this adaptation. We now have less than eight months until the September 2nd release date. And you know, it's not every year we have a new Tolkien adaptation to look forward to. So let's enjoy the ride and see how it all pans out in September. And let me know what you guys think of the title reveal in the comments. Did it get you hyped? When do you think we'll get a full-on trailer? Be sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you don't miss all the great Rings of Power content that I'll have here on the channel over the coming months. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.